Hey everybody, Kyle here from GoFromReviews.com with another unboxing video for you. Um, this is an interesting one this week because it is not a Criterion Collection uh, film set and it is not a Scream Factory set. It's a new, not a new company, but one we haven't covered before in unboxing and one that I'm actually surprised we're going to be covering. Um, but I've had this suggested to me a number of times um, and even though I own many movies from this company, a box set is kind of a shocker. So we're going to take a look at it together. This is from Mill Creek Entertainment, and this is The Hammer Collection, 20 film set. Um, again, Mill Creek has a lot of, what they usually do is they tend to pick up a lot of films that have either lapsed in their uh, copyright or they are um, available for really cheap, and they put out kind of bare bones editions of them. and. That's just what it is. Uh, nothing wrong with the way that they operate because again, they're getting movies onto physical media that you may have trouble finding. Um, I think they had this one set that I own, like 250 horror movies of varying degrees. But it is a set of movies that I'm happy to have because a lot of those films are tougher to find um, in any condition, let alone good condition. And Mill Creek, doesn't do a lot of cleanup, but they do enough where it's like, you know, it's it's worthwhile to have. So we're going to talk about the Hammer Films, the ultimate collection, the 20 film set. Let's open it up. Okay, so here we've got the set, Hammer Films, the ultimate collection from Mill Creek Entertainment. Nice. It's a nice box. I mean, it is. Let's peel this beast and check it out. Okay. Again, so this is just actual back matter to it. There's no flap here or anything like that. Um, I think the set looks nice on the outside. The Hammer Films, the Ultimate Collection looks nice. Good description of every single film on here. When you have these box sets of films that are not part of a series, finding them can be tough if you have a lot of them. So being able to quickly find the list is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and slide this off. Ooh, I like that. Look at that lovely. So on the front it mentions, we dare you to watch the cold, clammy fear, the shocking suspense, the blood-curdling horror, and the white, hot terror. Um, <laughs> and so this kind of just gives a look at the different films that were in there. I'll leave you guys to read that on your own. Now, before I open anything else, there was an issue with Hammer Films, the Blu-ray set that came out. I will leave a link in the description, um, and we'll find out if mine actually has it. New bonus features are included. It says Hammer Film featurettes and retrospectives, feature length audio commentaries on select films, and a 12 page movie and feature guide booklet. I don't see it in here yet. We'll see if it's inside this set, but some people were missing theirs. Oh, thank God it's here. Oh, baby. The booklet is here. Well, there's the booklet for it. If this set does not come in your set, there is. You can reach out to them and they will send you one. Hopefully, they still do that. Um, but I've seen a lot of people that have missed theirs as well. So. We're going to cover this in a second. Um, we'll just go through the, the films. So, on this first disc, we have The Revenge of Frankenstein, 90 minutes, color, not rated. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, 81 minutes, color, not rated. These are the two films I kind of bought the set initially for because these two are ones... I, I really like Hammer Horror, the way that they dealt with the universal monsters, if you will, and kind of took them to the next level. So these are the two films I initially bought the set for, and then all these other like weird ones are always good, too. These are The Damned, 95 minutes, black and white, not rated. And The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, that is 89 minutes, color, not rated. Oh, this one's got three on it. The Old Dark House, 87 minutes, black and white, not rated. Cash on Demand, which I hear is kind of like a heist film, uh, 80 minutes, black and white, not rated. And The Gorgon, 84 minutes, color, not rated. Over here we got two. On this one we have The Snorkel. 91 minutes, black and white, not rated. And Maniac, 87 minutes, black and white, not rated. Die, Die, My Darling, 97 minutes, color, not rated. And that's 1965. I should be mentioning the dates here. Stop Me Before I Kill, 108 minutes, black and white, not rated from 1960. Never Take Candy from a Stranger, 82 minutes, black and white, not rated, 1960. Scream of Fear, 1961, that's 82 minutes, black and white, not rated. Hammer knew how to keep the, the run times low, and they got some effective work out of there, too. The Stranglers of Bombay, 80 minutes, black and white, not rated, 1959. The Terror of the Tongs, 
77 minutes, color not rated. That's a quick one, 1961. It's also the Pirates of Blood River, 87 minutes, color not rated, 1961. And Sword of Sherwood Forest, 80 minutes, color not rated. The Camp on Blood Island, 81 minutes, black and white, not, black and white, not rated, 1957. Yesterday's Enemy, 95 minutes, black and white, not rated, 1959. And the last one here, The Creatures the World Forgot, 96 minutes, color, and that one's rated PG. There you go, 1970 right there, and it looks like all the special features are probably on that disc as well. Um, pretty standard stuff. You know what? That was pretty quick. Um, let's look through this book a little bit. Yeah, okay, so we'll cover the films that are in this booklet. So if you don't have if you don't have your book and you don't care enough to get it, I'll let you guys kind of see this here. The Revenge of Frankenstein from director Terence Fisher. Baron Frankenstein joins forces with a small-town German doctor in his latest and most terrifying experiment. They create a monster out of bits and pieces of several bodies, including the brain of a dwarf. Which, that's, that's not PC. Don't, don't discriminate. Uh, the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, which is from director Michael Carreras. An American financier disrupts the coffin of a mummified pharaoh and finds it empty. The mummy has escaped to fulfill a dreadful prophecy. Fun fact about the Hammer film The Mummy, the 1959 one, that I think this is a sequel to. Uh, I have owned three different copies of The Mummy from Hammer, and I keep accidentally buying copies of The Mummy from Hammer. I have purchased the same movie three times, thinking it's a different movie and realizing that I already own it. So this is actually a different movie. These are the Damned from Joseph Losey. An American tourist, a youth gang leader, and the troubled, and his troubled sister are trapped in a top-secret government facility experimenting on children. Everything with the damned is usually about the children. The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, from director Terrence Fisher. Ooh, another Terrence Fisher. Absorbed in research directed toward freeing the two natures of man, Dr. Jekyll degenerates into Mr. Hyde, a vengeful maniac. Pretty, pretty cut and dry, we know that story. The Old Dark House, from William Castle. That's right, the William Castle. An American car salesman living in London is invited to spend the weekend at the Femme estate. The Femmes, trapped in the house due to an ancestor's will, live in fear as they are taken out one at a time. Over here we also have the Gorgon from director Terence Fletcher, another Fletcher. In a rural village, a series of murders have been committed where each victim was turned into stone. A local professor investigates and finds an evil Gorgon haunting a nearby castle and in search of more victims. That's, that sounds sweet. Cash on demand from Quentin Lawrence. The, the, the Tarantino of Hammer. No, um, that is about a man posing as an insurance company uh, detective forces a bank manager to help him rob the bank by holding his family hostage. That is the one with Peter Cushing. Yes, so I do know that one then. The Snorkel dun, 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 from director Guy Green. Paul Decker arranges the perfect murder of his wife. He first drugs her into unconsciousness, then he seals the room and fills it with gas, appearing to be a suicide, but he didn't plan on a suspicious stepdaughter. I, don't, I feel like that's the whole story I just gave you. Hopefully there's more to it than that. Maniac from Michael Carreras. While vacationing in France, an American artist becomes romantically involved with an older woman, Eve, while also attracted to her teenage stepdaughter, Annette. Gross. Uh, pulled be between them, a plot is hatched to free Eve's husband from jail, but Eve has a different plan in mind. Down here we have Die, Die, My Darling from Silvio Narizano. An elderly religious fanatic whose son was killed in an auto wreck several years ago kidnaps her dead son's former fiancé and keeps her locked up in the basement in order to cleanse the girl's soul. Over here we have Stop Me Before I Kill from Val Guest, director. After a horrific crash, race car driver Alan Colby goes on vacation to recover but suffers blackouts and violent outbursts. With his wife by his side, he visits a psychiatrist who promises to cure Alan's suffering. <laughs> Now we have Never Take Candy from a Stranger from Cyril Frankel. Hopefully this teaches a lesson. A young girl tells her parents that an old man asked her to dance naked in front of him, but the police and the townspeople don't believe her. Ooh, that sounds very, very pulpy. Um, that is from, yeah, Cyril Frankel. Scream of Fear from Seth Holt. A young wheelchair-bound woman returns to her father's estate to find he's away on business, but she keeps seeing his dead body in various places. Her stepmother and other house guests employ a plan to drive her insane and take her inheritance. I hope I didn't just ruin the whole movie for you with that description. Uh, the Stranglers of Bombay from Terence Fisher. A captain in the East India Company lobbies to investigate an organized crime group of stranglers and thieves. Over here we have the Terror of the Tongs. I'm just going to preface this by saying I 
I don't condone any of the stuff that's being done in these movies. I've not seen any of them. I'm just talking about the movies here. The Terror of the Tongs from Anthony Bushell. A British sea captain seeks revenge from a gang of Hong Kong drug and slave traders known as the Red Dragon Tong for the death of his daughter. With the help of a former slave, they incite a riot to destroy the group. Down here we have the Pirates of Blood River. A lot of Christopher Lee in this set, I should point out. This is from director John Gilling. In the village of Devon, Jonathan Standing is exiled by his own father after committing adultery with a married woman. Sentenced to a prison camp, Jonathan escapes but is caught by a gang of vicious pirates. All right here we have Sword of Sherwood Forest. And I should point out that while Hammer is known for their horror, this is a lot of stuff that's both like very mixed genre. So I kind of like that too because these are not films you would normally discuss and they're here. So Sword of Sherwood Forest from Terence Fisher. Robin and his merry men must go undercover when they learn of a plot to assassinate the Archbishop of Canterbury, and plenty of action and intrigue ensue. Prepare for adventures with the world's most renowned swordsman. Okay, and over here we have the Camp on Blood Island from Val Guest. Uh, near the end of World War II, Allied soldiers are held prisoner in a Japanese camp. When Colonel Lambert finds out that the Allies are about to win the war, he knows the Japanese will kill all of the prisoners in the camp. So right here is Yesterday's Enemy from Val Guest. Cut off by the Japanese advance into Burma, exhausted British troops take over an enemy-held jungle village. Yesterday's enemy takes an unflinching look at the effects of war on the human psyche. And here's The Creatures That Time Forgot, the last film in here from Don Shafi. A Stone Age horror film with almost no dialogue. It centers on a tribe of cavemen. When the leader dies, there is rivalry between twin brothers, each of whom want the top spot. Oh, and here's the bonus features that are probably in that last one. Uh, we do have the audio commentaries for The Revenge of Frankenstein, and that is with filmmaker and film historian Constantine Nasir and author, film historian Steve Haberman. We have commentary on The Old Dark House with the Monster Party podcast featuring James Gonis, Sean Sheridan, Larry Stroth, and Matt Weinhold. <clears throat> we have commentary for The Gorgon with writer-director Joshua Kennedy, who made House of the Gorgon. We have The Snorkel with writer-producer Fef Sutton, writer, film historian Mark Jordan Legan, and screenwriter, film historian C. Courtney Joyner. We have a commentary on Never Take Candy from a Stranger with filmmaker, filmmaker historian Constantine Nasir, and a commentary on Scream of Fear with author, film historian Steve Haberman. Those featurettes on the last page, on the last disc are probably these: Hammer at Columbia Pictures, The Actors of Hammer, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb retrospective, and The Two Faces of Doctor Jekyll retrospective. So, there you have it. There's the book. Like I said, check below. If you don't have the book with you, you may still be able to get it. Um, but they, they screwed up on this book, apparently. So we'll place that right back in here. All in all, it's a very beautiful-looking set, which you don't really expect, again, from Mill Creek. They kind of get the film and they get it out there, but there it is, Hammer Films. So there you have it. That was the Hammer Films collection, the ultimate collection from Mill Creek Entertainment. Um, hope you guys got some information on there and uh, saw the inside of the box and decided if it's something for you or something you're gonna pass on. Um, again, folks, these unboxing things are kind of new to me. I like kind of sharing with you what I have because I have a lot of movies and if I'm going to have them and open them up, I might as well give you some insight as to what's inside because these things are not cheap and uh, it'd be nice if someone gave me that information so I could make the choices. Um, so I, I'm giving that to you. So hopefully you got something well, uh, well for your time. Uh, to decide if this is a set for you. Uh, if you enjoyed this content or any of the content that we have, please consider clicking a like. It's a simple thing you can do that will help support my channel, my business, and uh, it, it's something so simple that goes very far and it's much appreciated. Uh, you can also, while you're down there, comment. Uh, do you have any of the films we talked about that you're interested in watching? Have you seen any of the films that we have? Or do you have the set and you have some insight of your own? Please let me know. That's always appreciated. Um, don't forget, you can also subscribe, and that way every time I've got new content, you can be a part of it. Um, super simple way to just get involved and, and help me out with that. Um, you don't understand, unless you're in this space, how much likes and subscribes help us. They do. I know you hear us harping on them a lot. They really help. So that's why we harp on them. Um, and you can also share the video if, if you feel like doing so as well. Over in the verse with Goat Film Reviews, you can check out the website, goatfilmreviews.com. Recently, we put up a Suicide Squad early review, and we're ramping up for 31 Days of Horror again, which is coming back this October. Of course, I can't go in October without doing that. So you can find that at goatfilmreviews.com. You can also follow Goat Film Reviews at Goat Film Reviews on Facebook, or you can follow me at Almighty Goatman on Twitter and Instagram. 
You can also check out the show that I do twice weekly with Nick Palatichuk. The St. Paul Film Cast is what he hosts, and we host Kyle and Nick on Film Together, uh, where right now we're going through some films from 2016, um, and in September we'll be starting up animated movies. So stick with us for that, and uh, don't forget you can check that out at YouTube um, on its own separate channel, Kyle and, Nick, or Kyle and Nick on Film. I got the link down in the description as well, so you can find that very easily. Um, until next time, folks, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you have any feedback or anything you want uh, to comment about, know that I will try to uh, comment on every single one I get. I will try to reach back out to you. That I really do care about comments. They make the site what it is. They make the channel what it is. So I do appreciate those. Um, thanks for joining me. Until next time, we'll see you.